Thank you for tuning in to Docs and Box. Make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to our channel so that more people can get the content that you love. Enjoy. Welcome to Docs and Box. This is the first episode. And um, here I have Dr. Judy Nguyen. Um, so uh, first and foremost, thank you for um, taking time out of your day to do this. I appreciate it a lot. And um, also feel free to answer each question to whatever extent you're comfortable with. And you can also decline to answer if you wish. Sure. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just introduce yourself with your name, job, and education? Sure. Uh, I'm Dr. Judy Nguyen. I own Bella Eye Optometry in Newark, California. Um, I went to UC Davis for undergrad in neurobiology, physiology, behavior. And then I got another bachelor's at Nova Southeastern. Um, and I went to optometry school also at Nova Southeastern in Florida, <clears throat> Fort Lauderdale. Um, I also did my externships at Bascom Palmer, which is in Miami. Um, and then I graduated in 2010. And then I opened up my office here in Newark in 2011. So, uh, yeah, we're going on 12 years now, next month. Cool. Very impressive. All right. So um, I'm going to just start with the basic question. Um, what, what were the major factors that steered you towards optometry instead of a more popular specialty like family medicine or pediatrics? Um, so I still get to do family medicine. Um, it's just, just the eyes though. Um, so I like that I get to be my own boss and then I get to still, uh, I don't have to answer to a hospital board. Um, mm -hmm. I get the fashion aspect of it. So more eyewear, eye care. I still get to do the pediatrics part, like with myopia care. I still get to do aesthetics and fashion, um, but I like the fact that I get to be my own boss. So that was more why. The fashion part is interesting because most doctors usually um, don't talk about that. So can you like explain like what what part of it like interests you? Like, is it do you get to like design the glasses or anything, or how does it work? Um, I do have a friend who, like, if you follow Instagram, there's an account called Glam Optometrist. She mm -hmm. does design eyewear for kids, um, like sunglasses and glasses. Uh, I don't design glasses, but there are optometrists who do. Um, but I get to pick all the glasses that we, you know, sell. So I I make sure we have more fashion forward frames because, you, I mean, you could go to Costco and get glasses, but... Um, those are all like the the closeout ones that are like two, three years old. So yes, they're cheaper, but they're usually less fashion forward. But we'll have more designer, funner, more fashion forward friendly, and and they'll they'll fit our Asian faces better. Um, yeah. Interesting. Um, also, you mentioned that you get to be your own boss. So is it like that for? all optometrists or um, are there some opportunities for working in um, hospitals? There's definitely opportunities for working inside hospitals too. Um, it's, there's a broad range. Like you can work inside a hospital. I have friends that work at Stanford University. Um, I have friends that just don't wanna be their own boss. Uh, like I have four doctors that work for me and but so it just depends what your desire is there's corporate optometry who you know they just want to work at lens crafters they want to work inside the target um you know whatever fits your lifestyle not everyone has the 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 know-how or the desire to want to like you know handle the books or want to grow a practice from the ground up but yeah some people just want to work nine to five and go home and not think about work at all mm -hmm. but yeah yeah that actually leads into um my second topic which is what i um especially wanted to talk to you about it's um it was like what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages of running your own practice instead of like working in a corporate job so um so since i run my own practice i get to choose what what new toys i get to buy next so <laughs> So it's my money, right? Mm -hmm. So I can decide that I want to grow my dry eye spa. Then I can invest in a new fancy piece of equipment that'll that'll expand my dry eye practice. So I just bought the Luminous, which is FDA approved for dry eye uh, treatments. So 
yes, it's a, an expensive piece of equipment, but it is amazing at treating dry eye. Mm -hmm. um, but if I were at a corporate practice, then I my hands would be tied by my boss. I, like, yeah. I, I have to do what they make, they let me do. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but like, if I want to do myopia care, then I can do, I can expand whatever I want. Like one of my doctors loves vision therapy. So I let her do whatever she wants. She wants to have new toys and new treatments for therapies. And I give her a budget and we'll buy whatever she needs. Um, but whatever we need for myopia care, then I'll just get what, whatever I want. Mm -hmm. So that's the nice part. I'm sorry. Um, you said, you said stuff like dry eye and vision therapy. Um, I'm pretty sure like me and like most of the people in the audience don't know what that is. So can you like explain a little bit? Uh, so dry eye, you know how when you, when you're, in, you're in high school, so you probably game a lot, right? Like you're staring um, at your, your screen. I used to, for sure. Okay. So you used to game a lot, or you're, at least you're studying for an AP test and mm -hmm. you're staring at the computer reading a lot and you're not blinking ever and your eyes get kind of dry and gritty and just irritated and red. And your mom's like, your eyes look bloodshot and they just look super irritated or really scratchy and just irritated or your parents are might be engineers but they're just complaining about really dry irritated eyes that's dry eye okay um, so there's different treatments we could do to make your eyes feel better where they're not feeling so dry and irritated and gross um where your eyes just feel moist and not not red and bloodshot anymore mm -hmm. that's dry eye. Oh. um vision therapy though is um uh, it's kind of a way to get your, your hand eye coordination and your brain to work better together. Okay. Because some kids, some kids like both eyes don't, don't play well together. Like one eye will look at you and one eye will look the other way. Yeah. Like a lazy eye. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it's more strabismus. So lazy eye is when one eye doesn't quite see all the way 2020. That's an amblyopia. Okay. So, and then strabismus is when one eye is looking wonky like a different way. Okay. So we'll get we'll get it so the brain and the eyes will work with, well together in the sandbox. Okay. Um so she'll do she'll do vision therapy, kind of like physical therapy for the eyes and physical therapy for the body to make sure that both eyes work well together and that the kids can play sports better, can play play well together and then just have better hand eye coordination in general. Makes sense. Um so is that yeah. like the the focus of your clinic or do you do you offer like an overall um treatment services so vision therapy is like an added on addition that dr shroff does she does it uh one to two days a week she's she works part-time so mm -hmm. she does that as an added on thing um but we're open six days a week we do primary care mostly but we also do myo we have a myopia clinic and then we have a dry eye clinic and then we have vision therapy too. So we do a whole lot of things, but yeah. Um, what would you say are like the disadvantages though of running your practice? Insurance. Insurance? Insurance, yeah. Cause so like then- financial stuff? Huh? So like financial stuff? Yeah, it's like most people think that whatever I charge, a vision plan is what I get paid, mm -hmm. but it's not like insurances always find a way to not pay the doctor. And so all the, all the people think that whatever we charge the insurance is what I get paid, but usually it's like a little bit of that. And then insurance always finds a way to not pay me. So then, yeah, there's like a weird battle between like everything should be free and then it is not free. Yeah. I was kind of under the impression that like insurance was more of a problem if you're working in like corporate jobs. Um, but does it like apply equally? It applies equally. It's everywhere in healthcare. We have yeah. money for um, huh? money is definitely a struggle sometimes. Um, but like was that was that like a lot of, like a big problem when you were like start when when you were trying to like start the clinic or um, is it just like overall? Uh, when I started, I took every insurance under the sun. And then like, if it was a crappy insurance plan, I took it because I just wanted anybody in the door. 
-hmm. But then now um, I've gotten more choosy and I only take the better uh, in transplants because, um, yeah, because <laughs> now that we're busier, I, I try to just take who, whoever values us as much as we value our patients. Um, if it's an insurance plan that will just pay me $40 for our eye exams, then like, yeah, you can go to Walmart for that. Yeah. Like, if, I, I don't give $40 eye exams. Like, I am not, I am much better than Walmart. Like, if, if you want a Walmart exam, go to Walmart. Like, we have a lot of tech here. So I, I do a lot more for my patients than $40 worth. So oh. I don't, I don't want to, I don't accept those plans. So yeah. Um, can you like, can you sort of like walk me through the, like the overall like basic process of what you had to go through to like start your clinic and like how you got it like um, more popular and stuff? Um, so let's see. When I started, I, so when I graduated, there was nobody hiring in 2010 that was hiring full time. Okay. And then, um, so I worked for pretty much anybody that would hire me. And I worked seven days a week for like a year. Mm, no, for like eight months before I realized that like nobody was going to hire me full time. But I drove anywhere for um, two to three hours one way. Uh, and then I'd work it a full day and then I'd drive two hours to come home. So I'd work anywhere from Santa Rosa to Salinas to Stockton from Sunnyvale mm -hmm. um, just to save up money to try to open up my own place. So then I found like a thousand square foot spot and then I dumped everything in there. Um, and then I had my sister-in-law working four days a week just to answer the phone um, and schedule people to work uh, for like three days a week for when I was here. And then the other four days a week, I would work for anybody else just so I could make sure I had money to pay my student loans, pay, pay for the bills for here. And then, um, yeah. So whenever, when I opened August 8th, 2011, then I worked seven days a week solid for like a year. Uh, and then after that, I, I was just like, okay, I think I'm, think I'm good. I'm going to just work six days a week here only. And then another year I hired somebody on and then I was like, okay, I think I can just do five days a week. And then, and then, yeah. Cool. So, um, was it like, was it like your goal from when you were like younger also to like, um, was this like the end goal, like starting your own clinic or, um, did it kind of just like happen after you had to work, like after you had to like go drive, go like drive long distances to work for other people? Um, in college, it was my goal to have my own office. So it was definitely my goal to be my own boss. Like my, I'm the youngest of eight every, and all my sister is her own boss. So she's got a commercial real estate firm and she's her own boss. And I just aspire to be like her. Like I, I want to set my own hours, work when I want to work, not work when I don't want to work. And yeah, just, yeah. That's cool. Um, wait, I'm gonna get my notes for this one. So according to um, May 2022 Forbes article, um, so the number of physicians in private practice is declining. Um, in her article, Sally Pipes, referencing data from Avalier stated that almost 75% of doctors work for a corporate health system, which is um, a 20% increase from 2019. And she said that the COVID-19 pandemic was probably a big factor in this because uh, during that time, around 83,000 physicians moved to corporate systems. So um, how, how did you like navigate the COVID pandemic and how do you like, um, what were like some other obstacles that you had to overcome to keep it running? Um, so it's funny because right when COVID happened, I was pregnant and mm -hmm. I gave birth like a month after. I gave birth April 2020. So I was expected. <laughs> so I went on maternity leave, like right, right then. Mm -hmm. um, and like the day they extended shelter in place was the day it was my 36 week checkup. And then my blood pressure shot right up. Like I was, I saw the news report. And then my doctor was like, you have preeclampsia and we're going to deliver right now. And I was like, no, you're not because you, you promised me another week 
and I need to make sure my staff are good. And this kid needs to stay in here one more week. Like I, I need to set up my staff schedule, like make sure everybody's good and pay payroll one more time and make sure I have doctors to cover because this, this is not happening. Like this kid needs to stay in there. And then they're like, sure, sure. Go to Stanford and meet your husband there. And then like, we'll, we'll talk. And then, um, yeah, my kid came out. Uh, <laughs> and then I had to do payroll from labor and delivery. Uh, and then I, it was fine. My doctors came and helped and, uh, we ended up getting like the payroll protection. Like we got the, 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 whatever stimulus checks to help pay. Um, and we got some Medicare stimulus checks to help, but then it was, it was not too bad. Like our staff, our patients were pretty loyal. Um, we extended some prescriptions for like the people who were afraid to come out or just like too immunocompromised to come out who needed like their extension on their contacts or their glasses. Um, but we, we were overall, we fared pretty okay. Um, by June, July, we were open back like normal. And then by September, I was back into the office um, after maternity leave. But I had all my doctors, most of my doctors were back to working just like normal. Oh, uh, sounds cool. But, but, oh, the pregnancy story is crazy. That must have been like a wild time for you. Yeah. Like Pam kept changing how they were doing their appointments. And so I went from like all my doc doctor's visits outdoors to indoors and like they couldn't figure out how to do their doctor's appointments. And I had like two doctor's appointments a week because I was at the end part of my pregnancy. Yeah, it was weird. Right. Um, I know you touched on this earlier, but I kind of want to go back to it. Um, so obviously there's like um, in like the last decade or so, people have been using technology like a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. right? So how would you like with your um, job as like an optometrist, how would you say that's like affecting people's like eyes and their health? Um, and do you think like you see more patients now than you would have if you were working like 20 years ago? Um, well, like I said in my email, I see more patients now than 20 years ago because I wasn't a doctor yet. Um, but I I think technology's gotten better because it I'm able to screen for more diseases now, but it also helps me advocate for patients better because I can describe the things I see when I dilate you, mm -hmm. but like patients don't understand what a retinal hole is or they don't understand what diabetes in their eye is until Di I show them huh? Diabetes in your eye? Yeah. Is that like, like a thing? You it's a thing. So like if you have black, bad blood sugars, uh -huh. you can get bleeding in the back of your eye. Um, you can Google diabetic retinopathy. Let me find you a picture. Um, but then like you can get bleeding in the back of your eye. But if you don't see a photo of your own actual retina, then you're like, yeah, whatever. Dr. Judy doesn't know what she's talking about. Like, I feel fine. Like, nothing's going wrong. Mm -hmm. But then if I show you your actual retina, like, then you're like, oh, I got to take this shit seriously. Like, let me let me talk to my doctor. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that, like, okay, then let me, uh, let me do something about it. Then I can have a better heart-to-heart -heart with them saying that, like, okay, this is what I see. This is what you need to do. And here's your letter for your primary care doctor to mm -hmm. like fix your meds, get a little better control. And I'm going to see you in three months because we need to do something about it. Um, or I need to send them out for injections in the eye. So different things. Um, but with technology, it's better because I can image their eye and show them and then educate them better because now they see their eye and then they understand better. Because without the imaging, they're like, yeah, whatever. You're just saying words. Uh, uh, do you like do any of your own like independent research or? And uh, if you do, like, can you elaborate? Uh, I'm trying to do two things on dry eye and on ortho K, but I'm not allowed to talk about them yet. So. Oh, that's cool. Um, I 
think that should be it. Do you have any like closing thoughts for the audience that you want to share? Uh, or no. is that it? All right, cool. Um, thank you so much but for your time. And here is a thing on right. diabetic retinopathy. So this is normal. Uh huh. And this is diabetic rat. You see all that blood? Yeah, like yeah. That, that looks that's all when like your blood sugar is crazy that looks a little bit scary I, I would... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um does like the bleeding like like how does it like does it like affect the vision itself or like is it it, can, it can affect the vision like since it's not um like since it's not quite in the center, the blood mm -hmm. is more out in the periphery. The patient would notice more like splotches in their peripheral vision, but like the center of it, the center, this is their macula. Mm -hmm. They might notice like a little bit of blur, but they could technically still see 2020, but they mm -hmm. might just notice some like haziness in their peripheral. Mm -hmm. does, that, then, like, does that cause like any other problems other than vision or is it, or is it just that? It's, it's just that. But it it could it could cause cha like cha shifts in their prescription. Oh. So if they were like I've had one patient who was a minus five, who she ended up being um, no prescription at all. Like her blood sugar shot to a one thousand one week because she like indulged because it was some some like milestone birthday. Mm -hmm. um, she and then her blood sugar shot to a thousand. She ended up being no prescription at all for a week. She's like, I'm cured. And then, and then she was like, my glasses don't work. I, I'm cured. I don't need them anymore. And then I measured her and I was like, you're right. Uh, but then I looked back there and I was just like, mm, I think you need to go to the, to the, to the ER because this isn't right. And then uh, we checked and then she had diabetes and then she went and then I had, I made her some temporary glasses and then she ended up back at minus five because it was just her blood sugar was crazy. And then once we got her blood sugars under control, she ended up back at minus five. That, yeah. that's, that's pretty scary, honestly. Like if I had to see that picture. Like, yeah. yeah, but then when my patients see that and they're like, that's my eye. And, and then they're like, okay, I'll, I'll take my diabetes seriously. Mm -hmm. But then if they don't see the picture of their eye, they're like, yeah, I'm fine. Like I feel fine, I see fine. I can get my glasses now, I'm good. I'll see you in a year or two. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that should be it then. Um, okay. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day. You too. Bye.